It's not often a movie star walks into a city council meeting to ask if he can put on a concert to raise money to build a home for a badly wounded veteran. I hope that uh, you will grant us permission to come here to uh, Temecula and to celebrate the service of Juan Dominguez. You must have people who would do together. that for you. Why do you go to a city council meeting and try to get a permit? Um, wanted to make it hard for him to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, myself included, will tell you meeting the wounded from America's wars is a life-changing experience. That's certainly what happened to the actor Gary Sinise. You may know him as Detective Mac Taylor, the character he plays on the CBS series CSI New York, or as Lieutenant Dan, the gung-ho army officer who loses both legs in Vietnam in the film classic Forrest Gump. But you probably don't know he plays bass guitar in a band named after Lieutenant Dan that will give nearly 50 concerts this year to raise money for wounded warriors or to just plain entertain troops and their families. Sinise has been acting professionally ever since he was in high school. He's played presidents and astronauts, criminals and cops. But it was Lieutenant Dan that turned into the role of a lifetime. Let's hear it for Gary Sinise and Lieutenant Dan Band. Do you remember the 21st night of September? Since his first USO tour to Iraq in 2003, Gary Sinise has entertained nearly a quarter million American troops and their families. We've been all over the world. We've been on so many bases. I'll bet you we've been on more bases than you have. But there was a time when he couldn't even get the USO to return his calls. I'm not sure the USO knew who I was back then because I kept, uh, I kept calling and I kept trying to, to, to reach them. So he dropped a name the USO was sure to recognize. I'm Lieutenant Dan Taylor. Welcome to Fort Platoon. I'm the guy that played Lieutenant Dan, if they don't know who Gary Sinise is. Lieutenant Dan Taylor only appears in Forrest Gump for about 20 minutes. But with the exception of Forrest himself, played by Tom Hanks, he is its best-known character. An over-the-top army officer who sets out to win glory in Vietnam and ends up losing his legs. Lieutenant Dan! He is mired in booze and depression and headed straight for the bottom only to be saved by the invincible innocence and optimism of Forrest Gump. God damn bless America. He's angry at, at God and angry at life and all of that, uh, but he's able to put that all in perspective and move on, and at the end of the movie he's rich and he's, <laughs> he's married and he's standing up on two legs and he's a whole different guy. That was 1994, when movies about Vietnam vets didn't have happy endings. Well, thought I'd try out my sea legs. Well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. It's, uh, I think, probably the first time that uh, a Vietnam veteran had been portrayed as somebody who could overcome his obstacles and his challenges and move on from the Vietnam War. It's only Today, Lieutenant Dan lives on in the form of the Lieutenant Dan Band and the concerts it gives to raise money for wounded troops, like Marine Corporal Juan Dominguez, who lost both legs and an arm to a roadside bomb in Afghanistan in 2010. You were not expected to live? Died five times. Died five times? Blood loss. I had to have um, three transfusions, blood transfusions. They're, Instead of reviving me with air, they had to revive me with blood. Okay, this is the one that's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Dominguez is now back at his home base in California, spending much of his time in physical therapy, struggling to walk again. It's a slow and painful process, but he's not going through it alone. He's engaged to Alexis Gomez, whom he met after he was wounded. They currently live in a cramped townhouse where everything is more difficult than it needs to be. I can't really get to because my wheelchair is so bulky. But later this year they plan to move to a new home custom built to Dominguez's needs. Which is why a movie star asked the city council of Temecula, California if he could put on a concert to raise money for the house. I hope that uh, you will grant us permission to come here to uh, Temecula 
and to celebrate the service of Juan Dominguez uh, by bringing the community together to raise money through this particular concert uh, so that he knows that he's got a community that's, uh, that's welcoming and that's going to look out for him for many years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Steve. You must have people who would do that for you. Why do you go to a city council meeting and try to get a permit? Well, um, wanted to make it hard for him to say no. <laughs> <laughs> they said yes. And so before the concert, Dominguez, still a drummer despite his wounds, was back at his townhouse practicing for the show. Well, guess what? We got a special treat. Let's bring Juan Dominguez right out here. He's going to play with us. Denise and his band of professional musicians are teamed up with a foundation honoring a New York City fireman who died on 9-11 to raise money to build houses for Dominguez and nine other wounded veterans this year. But that's the easy part. Let's say we build somebody a house and now they've got a home to live in. Well, what happens then, you know, when you have no arms and no legs? Uh, do you, you know, where's your job? Are you just going to stay in that house and hide? The real point of this concert is to make sure that doesn't happen. You need community support if you're going to make it, and that's why coming into these towns around the country and playing these concerts to make sure that the town and the community understands what we're dealing with here. Somebody you see on television, you know, every week, it has come to your small community because it's important to support this wounded warrior who, who lives among you. Life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> it always comes back to that role of a lifetime that made him something of a patron saint for amputees. Is it the Lieutenant Dan thing that works for them? Sometimes it's Lieutenant Dan now because they recognize me as somebody that uh, maybe knows what they're going through because I played a guy who's lost his legs. Sister Blanche cannot be annoyed with business details right now. By the time he played Lieutenant Dan, Sinise was already an accomplished actor, having founded the Steppenwolf Theater in his hometown of Chicago and starred in productions from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest to Of Mice and Men. That was my destiny, and you cheated me out of it. But it was Lieutenant Dan who changed the course of his life. The movie opened July 4th, 1994. About two weeks after it opened, I got this call from the disabled American veterans. They wanted to give me something for playing Lieutenant Dan, for playing a uh, disabled veteran. The award is now on the wall of his offices in L.A. That's talking very specifically about Lieutenant Dan. Nor will we forget that character's heroic struggle to rise above his anger to become not only successful, but an unequivocally good human being. There were 3,000 people in this ballroom. Those that could stand were all standing, giving me an ovation. And, and I was, you know, I, I was so moved by it and really caught off guard by the emotion. What do you think it was that so moved you? Is it? Real amputees applauding a pretend amputee? I'm an actor. I'm not a... I, I play parts, you know. These people lived the part that I played and uh, were wounded and severely wounded, some of them, and, uh, and they were applauding me for playing a part. As of May 1st, there were 1,459 amputees from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. 439 of them lost more than one limb. Dominguez is one of 39 who lost three. And I basically thought I was worthless until one of the quad, quad amputees that was there. He was walking around like it was nothing. That was Marine Corporal Todd Nicely, one of five surviving quadruple amputees. I have a feeling 10 years down the road, I'm not even going to remember what it was like to have arm and legs. He and his wife, Crystal, are about to move into a new house being built just for them in Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. Paid for in part with money raised by Sinise at a concert last Memorial Day.
What does this house mean for you? For me, it means getting my life back, you know, being able to do a lot of the things on my own. It's impossible to imagine what the Nicely's have endured since that day in March of 2010 when he stepped on a booby trap bridge in Afghanistan. I remember thinking if I just keep breathing, I'll make it home to my wife, so. You know, you, you can't sacrifice much more for your country and live to tell about it. Yeah, that's true. In addition to his devastating wounds, they had to deal with a sometimes insensitive military culture. Their superiors, they look at them like they should be able to function like they did before. Like we had an instance where a gentleman uh, got mad because Todd didn't shave his face. You know, this is, that's probably not something that should be on your priority list of things that Todd should have to do. Living without hands is the hardest thing I think I've had to... You're clean shaven this morning. Yeah, that took me a while to learn how to do that. Before I had uh, cuts all over my face, <laughs> I'd be bleeding all over, so... There may always be frustrations for the Nicely's, but at least he will not have to worry about stairs in their new home. It will have its own elevator. When you get that, what, what difference is that going to make in the, the way you live in this house? Yeah. It's going to make life ten times easier. Sinise set up his own foundation to help build homes for the severely wounded, except triple amputee Brian Anderson, who doesn't want one. You're not uh, getting a, a, a smart home for yourself? No, I'm not. Why not? I'm good. Like, I get around just fine. I do everything I want to do. Um, I don't need it. So give it to somebody that would take it. And I would feel guilty taking something away from somebody that could actually need it. But that hasn't stopped him from becoming friends with Sinise, a relationship he literally fell into when he stumbled while trying out his new prosthetic legs in the physical therapy room at Walter Reed. And I just put my arms out and I landed on the first person that I could grab. Then I look up and I'm like, oh, holy crap, it's Gary Sinise. And he looks at me and he's like, holy crap, the real Lieutenant Dan. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. You will always be Lieutenant Dan. And he's like, come on over here, let's have a talk. And then we just started talking about everyday things. And it was like he was talking to me as a person and not just a wounded soldier. And that Anderson is definitely a person. And one of the writers on CSI New York was inspired to turn him into a character, a very unlikely murder suspect. What do I think? I'm not going to let you stand here and accuse me of murder. The gag was that we hid him from everybody, and then we showed him, and he gets himself up on his legs by himself. A gymnast before he joined the Army, Anderson carries on like any other 30-something. The last thing you would call him is wheelchair-bound. You're obviously in a very good place for a guy that has sacrificed as much as you had. I am in a very good place, yes. Do you think... Gary Sinise is responsible for any of that? Gary's responsible for the beginning. I've done a lot on my own for myself. Gary was the one to show me that I can do everything, that it is possible. He really showed me that I can still do anything. It doesn't matter that I'm in a chair. If this guy can see that, why can't I? It's his role of a lifetime, and it keeps Sinise on the road most weekends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you for what you do for our country. It's part of my life. It's part of my, what I think is important, what makes me feel that I can contribute. Uh, You're a big shot actor. But this is what makes you feel important. It gets you out of yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it puts everything in perspective real good.